Hey everybody, I'm Ken Brandt and I'm an artist. So here I am in my studio and the other day I did a watercolor painting of a French cafe scene and here it is right here. This is my second attempt at doing a watercolor and this what I found out from doing this is I suck at doing watercolor but it's nothing that uh, some practice over time won't fix um, so what I want to do is I want to do uh, the same painting but in oil which is the medium that I pretty much work in mostly and um, so I'm going to do that. I have it set up on my French easel over here on a 9 by 12 panel and I use the charcoal pencil and I just drew in the um, the scene real quick with the charcoal pencil and uh, I don't I have my still life that I'm working on over here still I didn't want to ch uh, mess um, with that setup uh, right now so um, I, that's why I set up the French easel and uh, we're going to try to do the same scene in oil and I'm either going to make a mess out of it or it's going to be a better painting. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. So here's the palette that I have set up for the painting. I have the titanium white, I have the cad yellow, um, I have yellow ochre, I have, that's a cad yellow deep by the way, uh, I have cadmium red, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, uh, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and raw sienna looks very much like yellow ochre. When they're out of the tube, I can't even tell um, them apart. So that's why I have the raw sienna next to the burnt sienna, so that way I know. Um, I have some Payne's gray and some black. And those are the colors I'm going to work with on this painting. And uh, we'll see how it goes. As you can see, I did not put an underpainting on. I went right at it with some color. So I'm looking, I'm treating this more like a study than an actual, you know, true to life painting that I would, you know, be taking my time with or anything. I was basically just trying to do a better painting in oil as opposed to what I did in watercolor. I also added raw umber to the palette. Um, it's a nice rich brown and the reason I did that is because when I want to change the value of one of my colors to a darker value, um, you're going to want to use uh, brown to do that. Like for example, if you have the color red and you want a darker red, uh, you would your, your tendency would be, okay, I'm going to use the color black or Payne's gray and mix it in there to make the red darker. And it will, it definitely will make it darker. But black and paints gray, those are in the blue family. So you're gonna end up with uh, really a purple and not a red. So if you wanna keep the red, but don't wanna change the color, you're gonna, you're gonna add brown to it. And that'll darken the value and keep it the same color. So that's why I added the raw umber to my palette for that reason. And I, have, I ended up using the raw for a lot more other areas as well. Uh, there were some there were some browns in the in the picture that I um, wanted to put on the painting so that's why I did that. So what I'm doing here is um, just putting in the uh, the basic colors uh, trying to fill the palette or the the, the uh, canvas um, cover it completely and then uh, I was going to go back over that with some uh, with a smaller brush and uh, add some details in there. I really found that uh, I uh, wanted, I, I spent a lot of time um, putting in a lot more detail into this than I did on the watercolor. The watercolor painting took me probably, uh, I'd say probably maybe an hour, maybe not quite an hour to do the watercolor. And obviously, if you look at it, it shows. Uh, this painting here in oil took me about two and a half hours, I would say, uh, working on it. And um, 
quite pleased with the way it came out. It's by no means a masterpiece, uh, but the way um, the way I left it is uh, if I wanted to go back and work on it later and maybe put this into a show or uh, put it in a gallery, um, there, there really isn't a lot more I would uh, do with it. Um, I would just refine some of the details, uh, maybe uh, you know, just sharpen up some of the areas, uh, add some, uh, add some uh, basic, uh, some brighter colors into some spots. But other than that, that's really all it. Um, I wouldn't do too much more to it. I really like the way it came out. Quite pleased with it. I think it looks much better than the, the watercolor painting. And I think. Uh, what I'll do is at the end of it, uh, this video, I'll put them side by side and you can see uh, exactly how they look and you'll definitely agree that the oil painting came out much, much better. And that's just because I'm more familiar, I've been working with oils for quite a few years, so I'm much more familiar with this uh, medium. And uh, the watercolor, um, when I look at it, it just makes me want to delve into that medium even more, uh, become a much better artist with that, because what I would like to do in the future is I would like to do my studies in watercolor and use that uh, as a reference for the oil painting, a much larger oil, oil painting. And this will kind of give me an idea as to the colors I want to use and how I want to uh, place them in the original oil paint. Uh, the colors that I'm using here are very similar to the colors that I used in, in the water painting originally. I might have added, uh, um, like I said, the raw umber. Um, I did not use black in the watercolor painting. Um, I pretty much just used a mixture of black. Uh, I want to say it was the paint gray and some ultramarine blue to make my darker colors in the water. A lot easier to. Uh, in fact, I think I used black very sparingly. The tops of the little lights, I think I used some black there. I think really that was it. I don't recall using it anywhere else. And uh, so yeah, I really, um, I really like the way this came out. It's a nice little scene. Um, I do. What I learned from this is uh, I really need to work on my figures. You know, people in the scenes a little bit better. Um, it's kind of difficult on this small scale. This is a 9 by 12 and the people in this painting were really small. So yeah, uh, putting in details in there, it's, you know, you just want to do it loosely and just kind of give the impression that they are people. But at the same time, you want it to look real. So this is something that I definitely need to work on future paintings. Uh, I want to do more scenes like this, you know, and naturally a lot of times um, when people do scenery painting, they'll leave out the people because people are duck typically. They're difficult to do. So I don't want to do that, you know, when you're doing a scene, you know, the, uh, like say, you know, a cafe in the middle of the noon, you know, afternoon, you know, there's naturally going to be people around, so you want to be able to paint them in. And so I definitely need to get better at that. Uh, it, this also forces me to uh, become much looser with my uh, with my painting as well, and so that's kind of the effect I was trying to go for here. I didn't want to be photorealistic, but I did want it to look, you know, uh, when you looked at it, I wanted you know you could see right away what it was. So you know that's also something that I'm working on. Um, initially, when I started oil painting, uh, I wanted, to, I was, you know, very uh, concentrated really heavily on trying to get, you know, all the details right and everything perfect. And to me, um, uh, I wanted, now, when I look at my stuff, I want to be more, um, I want to achieve more of a realistic look but with a lot looser brush strokes. So that's something that uh, I'll probably be constantly striving for for the rest of my life. 
one of my favorite painters, uh, John Singer Sargent. He was uh, he was really good at doing that, making a, a brush stroke. And then uh, you know when you look at the painting up close. It's just a, a, a smattering of different brush strokes, but when you step away from the painting, you know, six to eight feet away, it's like, wow, it's, you know, it's, it, looks, it looks real. So that's something I'm trying to achieve also. It's not going to be easy to do with a smaller painting like this, but I'm working on uh, much larger paintings like the still life that I'm in uh, progress of uh, working on now, which there will be a video. I should have the video for that up next week, and you can see how that's, uh, that came out. And uh, so I'm trying to, you know, do that kind of thing with that, just put in the brush strokes. Uh, so when you look it up close, it's just going to be kind of a blob. And then when you step away from it, you know, it's something very beautiful and far. And that's how I want it. Uh, that's how I want my paintings to look. So again, that's something I'm constantly striving to do. So yeah, I'm uh, very happy with the way this came out. And hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you enjoyed seeing the differences between um, you know my watercolor method and my oil, oil painting method and hopefully someday my uh, watercolors will, uh, will look much better than what they do now so again it's just a matter of just practicing and practicing that's that's why I do what I do I just keep working at it until I uh, achieve the effect that I'm looking for and try to get better with it and uh, hopefully this uh, inspires you to do the same, no matter what medium you're working in. Um, if there's uh, any um, questions you have about uh, my techniques or, or the way I approach certain things, or you, you want me to try something that uh, maybe you yourself uh, aren't sure about, um, just you know, put it in the comments below. Uh, and again, if you uh, like, like my videos, uh, make sure to hit the like button subscribe and hopefully we'll uh, you know, uh, do a lot more paintings like this in the future so yeah right, and uh, uh, thank you for watching <laughs>